everybody and welcome to the NLC Division 2 semi-finals, the lower bracket finals, whatever you want to call it. My name is Jake Hipperin Matthews and I'm joined by Jamada. Jamada, how are you doing, mate? You alright? Yeah, I'm not too bad. It's been a, a hot minute since we've been on Division 2 together. Uh, and actually, since I've been on Division 2, I think I've only covered uh, the first round, which was, I believe, uh, Rate Light Side, where Light Side ended up taking down Rate 3-0. Uh, Pretty big upset, of course, uh, lost in the previous round to Flung, who will be one of the teams that we will be casting over today. Yes, we have two teams who are playing today in a best of five. It is uh, Flung, the fourth seed from the regular split, uh, versus Natives, who were the second seed from the regular split. Um, Flung had a pretty good start to everything so far, I think it's fair to say. Um, pulling out things like the Silas support, if I, if I remember that right, um, and kind of smashing their way through into the semifinals. Yeah, no, uh, you know, Flung, no stranger to playing some of these more out there picks. Uh, having spoken to a couple of players inside the league, whenever the topic of Flung comes up, it's always like, these guys, they're such an irritating team to play against because they play weird stuff like Darius Top, Kane Jungle, and they make it work. This is the the, the weird thing about it, and that's why I always love Division 2, because you always have these kind of wild card teams that are willing to play, you know, their comfort over Mel. And of course, like you just highlighted, right, you see the Silas support uh, come out. I think also Shivana Jungle is another thing that uh, Shafty plays as well. So yeah, we'll see what Flung decide to bring to Natives, because I think Natives, whilst sometimes their drafts can be a little bit unorthodox in their own right, they also still play relatively textbook League of Legends too, so I think it's going to be a very interesting clash of ideologies here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about these teams. We've got a little bit before we get into champ select. Um, obviously, natives are the second seed coming out from uh, the regular seed, uh, from the regulars, not regular seed, uh, regular season. That's the word I'm looking season. for. Yeah, there you go. Just fill in there. Fun and time. Um, <laughs> what What are our kind of opinions on this team right now? Where do we see them at? What we What are we kind of expecting out of natives coming into this best of five? Uh, I mean, I still definitely have Natives down as the favorites in this series. I don't think that's necessarily a very out there statement. Uh, I think, you know, they really did bring it uh, to Munster in the upper bracket uh, finals. Unfortunately, weren't able to obviously take the whole series. It was very back and forth, uh, but in the end, Munster still did uh, end up prevailing. I think there's been definitely uh, a lot of talk about Natives in terms of their overall progression throughout the split, because I think they started off very strong, and then they had this bit of a, a bit of a rut in the middle of the split where... It seemed like something was going wrong uh, in the communication, right? In in terms of like their early games were always particularly clean. Their mid games then were also just as. But even in in some games where they decided to kind of or not decided, but where they were full behind, it felt like they would always find these creative ways back into the game. And some of that creativity started to lack towards the end of the split. And they would actually just end up dropping games because it felt like they no longer had as strong an understanding uh, on, on the map compared to sort of the first maybe four-ish weeks or so. Uh, definitely something that we brought to them. They said, yeah, we're working on these things. And hopefully for them against Flung, because I think Flung also a team that will do pretty weird stuff, let's just say, uh, when it comes to the macro game. They will make decisions that kind of make you swear sometimes. We'll see if they've you know worked on these issues because, again, Flung will be the kind of team that will push your mental to the limit in that regard also interestingly enough when we spoke to natives after uh, their loss to monster um they said that they'd actually rather play versus light side than flung just because uh with flung you kind of don't know what they're gonna be pulling out obviously yeah. kind of speaks smiles to them when you see the shivana and the silas like we said um but it is one of those teams that makes teams harder to play against because uh obviously at the moment the european masters is also on um and i had a complete brain fart on the name of the team i think it was eska um, I'm going through my notes for He's that. Going through his, his I'm notes actually going through my yeah. notes. Right. Uh, I <laughs> oh, it's bison's. It's bison's. bison's. Um, there's, there's always a, there's like you know the thing about bison's and what has obviously scared a bunch of teams in the European Masters is the things like these NASA supports, these RE top lanes. When you're playing into teams that do have these unconventional play styles, it makes prepping for them that much harder because you can prep like for traditional league and then get caught off guard by crazy league or you can maybe play versus scrim partners and prep for like you know more interesting and, and different kind of champ selects and then suddenly flung could just pull out a normal champ uh, like a normal like um comp and then you're a little caught off guard however i do think when you get into these best of five scenarios it's a bit interesting and i don't know if there's a right or a wrong answer to this but i feel like it's it's hard to say you know if it's better to have a crazy champ pool or or worse, because you can obviously catch them off for one game with like you know these these intense and I don't I avoiding the word cheesy because I don't think cheesy is a very it, I don't think that's a very fair way to say it but you know if, when you pull out unconventional champions and unconventional team comps it can work for one game 
but it might not be able to work for other games. It might not even be ban worthy in other games because they just figured out the play style of that comp. I like your as an ex coach uh, opinion on it. Like, what do you kind of think <laughs> of teams with like bizarre champ selects? I mean, uh, you're, you're talking to the person that let their jungler play Nunu two times in a row a month <laughs> into Olaf. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it's definitely a. Uh... It's a double-edged sword, right? I think, like you're saying, there's these aspects of, hey, maybe we can draw bands, maybe, you know, uh, it's one of those things where you can catch them off game one, maybe game two, or even, you know, hell, we've seen teams pull out the weirdest of picks in game fives and best ofs, right? Um, I think it just really, there's too many variables there, even down to things like the meta, right? Are we in a meta where, you know, three champions, like at the very start of the season, 12-1, 12-2, where, you know, it was, what was it, Zeri, LeBlanc, and something else uh, need to be banned. I think it was Jinx on, on red side. It always needs to be permabanned, otherwise you're kind of just grieving. Yeah. Uh, we're not necessarily in that meta anymore. We're kind of just slightly past it now. Um, so, you know, things like those Aphelioses, the, the Jinxes, they don't always have to be permabanned. So from red side, which is actually the, the side that names have selected here, you can feel okay in, you know, banning away two sort of targeted bans, and then maybe you think about something like the Zeri if you feel like you're particularly threatened by that. But I think in terms of what Flung usually play, they might not feel the necessity to ban that one away as Shafti's Kane and Rambengi's Pike are removed away from the pool. And on the opposite side, Ari, Karma, and Zaya taken away from Nears. Yeah, pretty fast um, lock-ins there on the bands, but we'll see what the final ban is going to be here from Natives. Still feels like there's a fair amount of things open. Obviously, that Zeri being a big one still. You know, you're saying we're not quite in that meta anymore, but they are still. Zeri and Jinx are still two champions that do show up quite a lot. Yeah. The Volley Bear, also a jungle of it, is very potent at the moment. So yeah, curious to I... see what they're going to first pick. And I have to say, it's important to mention, we are on 12.5b. Uh, we're not on 12.6 like how we are uh, over at EUM. Uh, so, you know, those <clears throat> the Jinx and the Aphelios bans, they're not uh, banned, rather the uh, nerfs aren't quite there yet. They're still pretty strong champions to take uh, in early rotations uh, on this patch. And Flung, they're actually going to go for something kind of normal here in the Viego first pick. Uh, I mean, it depends if uh, natives pick weird things now, because then they can just <laughs> steal that. <laughs> uh, there you go! There you go. I mean, uh, okay, so actually, funny story. I've been messing around with Udyr a little bit recently because, I, I don't know, some you know, you, you play League of Legends, you get a bit of a niche. Uda is actually still pretty strong, and if you recall, last year they, you know, they did things like uh, nerf the aura, uh, the aura, also the, the actual Phoenix Blast, blast damage itself. Yeah, they buffed it back up afterwards, but all of the items had been changed, the runes had been also altered a little bit. Uda still clears at obnoxious speeds, and he's still also going to be incredibly quick once he picks up the uh, the chem tank too. So he's going to be able to run down people and be an absolute nuisance in the back line if that's what he has to do. And he has to play pill. Well, he just best slaps all of the divers, and there's a constant uh, meat shield to keep Yoppa alive on this Jinx, which was the other pick uh, in that rotation there for Naves, and now over to Flung. You imagine probably looking at an AD plus maybe mid laner, and they're gonna go for the Veigar. This could also actually still go down towards Guffey as well. Uh, so this is a pretty strong flex. So now I'm wondering whether or not Flung just earlier rotate their support here blind. I think it'll be a little bit risky maybe, because then you, of course, run the risk of that support counter on R3, and then you get two bands uh, when Naves then get priority on a solo lane. I think it could look a little bit rough, but I think given the Veigar pick, it's either that or they blind top uh, for Vangstad. I know you're probably a little bored of me saying it, but I actually really love Vega right now. It's bit into what they've already locked in, into the uh, Udyr. Like, it'll be a nuisance at his speed of clearing, but when you get to these uh, kind of skirmishes around objectives, around dragons and uh, Rift Heralds and all that stuff, the cage just makes such a massive zoning tool, which it just makes it impossible for Udyr to deal with. Ooh. Now, the Renata getting locked in here, um, I normally see Renata get locked a little later down the list, so it's interesting to see it get quite highly prioritized here. They obviously do want it, they obviously, you know, again, you've got a uh, Viego who wants to be up in your girl. The same goes for the um, Rakan. You're locking that Renata, that hostile takeover can really take over team fights, excuse the pun. As we are now looking towards the next ban phase, the Trindamir are going to get banned away from natives. Yeah, Trindamir and taken away from Vangstead. And Errol is on, they both play it. wonder if they'll also go for something like a Darius here. I'm also curious to see what natives are actually willing to uh, go for on R4, whether they want to pick up their mid lane for a little, whether or not they want to hold their counter pick uh, for Lundorf uh, as well. I mean, I think both options pretty fine, right? Uh, Lundorf and Relay both very capable, but I think when you're talking about Vangstead, some of these champions that you can pull out, they're so strange. I think you probably just go for Relay's uh, mid lane pick here, or you try and find the flex between the two. Uh, if that's something that is in your locker, Camille's going to be taken away from Lindorf. I don't think it necessarily singles anything in this game. And also the Malphite taken away, obviously pretty good uh, into the Jinx. 
uh, in isolation, so I don't think there's anything too crazy going on. We're still going to have things like the Nar available uh, pending that doesn't get banned right here by Flung. Uh, things like Jace as well still up and available too. And of course, some of those other uh, slightly more spicy duelists, things like the Fiora uh, and I the Irelia too, uh, both up and available as the Gangplank is also taken off the board. Less spicy as well though, but Lundorf does still play the Orn. That is a champion I, yeah. I almost kind of always remember Lundorf for, and I guess there was a period where every top laner played it, so that might be a little bit uninteresting, but they are looking to see what they can pick up in the top or the mid, like you're saying. Probably going to be that mid lane pick. Remember that Vega is still technically flexible, could go in the bot, could go in the mid lane, and Lundorf just going to default back on to mm. that Orn. Obviously a team fight engager for them, someone who can Darius, kind of start yeah. these fights up. Do you think Darius? I Vang feel like Vangst I think this is a Darius angle for Vangstead. I mean, he's looking at Orn and he's looking at Udyr. I mean, he's pretty much going to almost always win out in the 1v2s, I'm pretty sure. Or he could just go for something that's going to outscale on the side lane as well. Very predictable forms of CC from both Udyr uh, and the Orn. A little bit of a mind game. I don't mind it, because right now you've got a lot of wave clear from the Vagar in the later stages. Kind of hard to engage onto you, but he's just giving us the bait hovers. He's just going to go for a tank matchup. Uh, definitely quite interesting, Alvan. So we've seen that more and more as the split progressed. They went from, you know, more consistent carries to things that are actually uh, a little more to deal uh, do with just neutralizing or just scaling up. And Arrow will pick up his Cassiopeia very frequently banned away from him. He is blind picking it, but it's something that is complete comfort for him. Uh, and again, another tool which into the Udir oh. is going to feel very bad. And Relay is just going to go for the outrange matchup with the Seraph. That's something we haven't seen in a little while here. Uh, of course, Cassiopeia, she's sort of a mid range uh, mage, right? She can't really, or if anything, she kind of plays more like a battle mage, right? She wants to get up in people's faces with the Noxious Blast and Twin Fans. Seraph just wants to keep her at arm's length and as far away from him as possible. Uh, and of course, the wave clear. And once she sort of hit that level five mark, level six onwards, uh, you're going to be just fine. Uh, in terms of the mana pool and clearing out those waves. I do have a one big problem with Flung's comp. Other yeah. than the Ego, they're really lacking in AD. Um, and Lundorf on the tank can just stack magic resist if he wants, and it's going to be able to really slow these fights down and kind of buy space for Joppa to get, you know, get these picks off and start to really take over team fights. I do worry about that. Um, however, they obviously do have fantastic zone controls with the Miasma, with the Cage, obviously just Scion being able to get there in any uh, any moment. They can kind of start fights on their terms as well. I Well, both teams can start fights on their terms, to be fair. I think, honestly, this is a very interesting draft, and uh, I'm curious to see actually how it's going to get played out, because I feel like... I think it's fair to say I don't think either team technically like won on draft. I think they they both teams have their strengths. Like, obviously, one team has Jinx, uh, <laughs> which is the strength in its own right. But I think, you know... Flung need to definitely execute this right. I think the room for mistakes is obviously um, when you're running like double AP carry, you obviously have like a way less room for kind of mistakes because eventually they're just not going to be able to cut through Lundorf. That's yeah, my no, I mean, I, I will say I think things like the Udir, they're going to be nullified, right? Uh, Stille's job now is kind of turning into a, hey, is Ron Bengi running out with the quickness on? Bear yeah. slap, right? Like trying to run into Casio and trying to run into Vega Cage it's going to feel like a near Herculean task, uh, to be honest, if you're ever trying to find real backline access and threat. I think this is going to be more about, uh, you know, who makes it to objectives first. I think that's going to be a very big thing. Yeah. Like you said, all of these only tools available, I think also sort of in spirit, also there uh, for Nage, right? The threat of the uh, Call of the Forge World coming down, the threat of the hostile takeover, things like chokes going to be really important to control here. Uh, so that's why I think priority before objectives that sort of build up 40 seconds before is going to be what's very key uh, and watching things like reset timers at sort of 60 seconds before an objective when you're talking like 15 minutes onwards any objective that spawns after that sort of timer whoever is in the river controlling the dragon uh the dragon entrances first i think is gonna probably have a slightly higher success rate uh, than the other team at picking up these objectives just because of the way that the tools that these guys have drafted themselves work well we are on to the rift for our first game here as Flung taking on Natus, this is a best of five, remember, so both teams trying to get a feel for each other in this best of series, and you know, for a lot of these teams, it is an, a little bit of a uh, a new experience in a best of. Obviously, they have all played one each. I, I believe it's only one so far. Yes, one one each so far, but even so. Yep, Flung have to come through the bottom side of the bracket. Natives on the top side. And like you said, best of something they will at the very least have a very little bit of experience with and i think this is going to be a fun series 
actually to kind of just talk about adaptation between each game because i feel like you know natives to me they've been the team that you know have maybe impressed me the most in terms of uh, their understanding of just just league of legends in general i think mm. I, I recall maybe i think it was about week seven week eight where there was a particular game where they were running a very heavy engaged composition but at some point they just realized they can't win front to back anymore and i feel like any other team would have just been you know continually biting their head against the wall but they said okay we can't win front to back we're gonna set up these massive areas of fog and we're gonna play uh effectively just for flanks we're gonna look for the high value targets always before we actually get fights going and i can't recall any other team having a better understanding of their team fight win conditions outside of natives uh, and i think the same thing kind of goes to draft we'll see a very clear adaptation game by game if there's things that bother them if there's things that they want to try out uh, or again, I hate to use the word in repetition, but adapt to and Natives will be a very strong team at that. I think adaptation is going to be key here. Obviously, you do have, you know, Nature's ability to read the game, but then also flung with, you know, more spicy draft capabilities. So it's going to be interesting to see how both teams actually uh, kind of play out this best of. And hopefully it's not just a 3-0, because uh, it'd be nice to see, you know, how the teams do kind of push and pull versus each other. Especially in the first couple of games while they try to get a feel for, you know, how to find an advantage over each other. It's what makes Best of Five so much fun. Yeah, exactly. And you can see Snille on the bottom side. Full clear, almost done with his clear already. Skullcraft still got 15 seconds left. And as I was talking about Udi, his clear speed, it's still really obnoxious. Uh, still very, very fast. He's actually going to make it into the river. At level four, Shafty will be there at level three. I'll spot him out on the blue buff and you can see there starts Tiger, two points probably in Phoenix. He knows Shafty is probably going to be around. Does lose out he's still that. Oh, Shafty. Shafty. Yeah. Shafty is just going to ult through mid as well. Go get the second yeah. crab. It's not as detrimental as it was last year. Giving up two crabs. It's still pretty rough though. You don't like it. Yeah, it's definitely still don't like it. The gold is uh, in the same kind of region of worth but in the XP. I think it's they, they more than halved it and it's like all right we've had enough of junglers throwing their lives away uh, level three level four definitely very nice as really this is maybe going to be the recipient of a shafty gank but really we'll just get this wave in go for a reset of his own likely pick up the lost chapter has the mana uh mana crystal start we'll actually go and interrupt shafty and now still eight might just run face first into bankster yeah, Vangsad's aware of it though, he's moving away, the ghost is on and here comes back up, can Vangsad survive? Yes! Flashes over the wall to safety. And uh, Summoner now down in that top side, Lundorf has a wave in a pretty okay place for himself actually here, so he'll be quite happy to hold this. Yeah, and I thought he was going to craft something for himself, he started to. What will it be? Nope, he <laughs> keeps on cancelling it. <laughs> What do, you, what do you think Lundorf's going to buy first? Uh, I don't know why I'm making a mini game out of this. It's just because he's cancelled it twice now. It's got I my assume, attention. So I assume he's going to be going Barmies, but I don't think he'll have a Barmies yet. Yeah, I think no, he's... Not with 25 CS. Yes. No, no, he no. won't. It'd be pretty close. There you go. Is it 1100? It's 1100 for a Barmies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. There you go. Picks himself up a Ruby Crystal. There's a... Ooh. That, that was nice. pretty cheeky, that. Lundorf was actually going to go back in with a Searing Charge. You could see by the way he was positioning. Because Vangstead stayed very comfortably. Oh, uh, no. Uh, hold on. This might just be the solo. Solo kill. Vangstead might just try and get a little bit more damage off. Gets the grasp, but he's on a ward. He doesn't know about it. Dodges out on the queue. Looking for the knockup. Lundorf is so close. His first yes, block picked up. But Vangstead should just be able to beat him down. Decides not to go for it. He goes for the wave instead. Interesting decision there. Lundorf. <laughs> I actually kind of got away with all that. Yeah, I will say. I'm not sure what Lundorf was waiting for. If I had to... <laughs> See, my ARAM brain is telling me he was waiting for another grass proc. But, uh... <laughs> I think... Just maybe a... Slight brain fart. Let, let him live for a little bit longer than he really need, needed to. And like you said, Vangstead. Also making a pretty curious decision to not try and run Lundorf down. Goes for the wave. Crashes it instead. But the issue is because Lundorf's still alive, he just holds it for a freeze anyway. Lane state is nearly in the exact same position it just was. Now both these top laners level six. I Honest. expect we see not too much going on as well. handshake missed by clocks. And I know what he was about to say. Balanced, yes. Yes. Balanced. <laughs> yeah. 
Thanks, it just got a full charge Q and auto off, and Lundorf just breathed on him and then autoed him with, gra with a grasp and uh, the snare, but looks like actually some action is breaking out. Uh, the game. He is just yeah. dead in Joppa. I'm curious about the setup into that one because that was a little bit of an uh, interesting play. Shafty being a little bit careful as a snilly, but we'll be able to blast going away to safety. And uh, Guff. A little bit nervous right now. Yeah, it probably is. Not going right in the early game before Flunk. They lose out on the top side 1v1, 2v2 as well. Your point clocks, they just win out. Uh, Ron Bungie doesn't even end up throwing his flash. Now Goffey forced to back away, miss out on, I don't think, any of the XP, but definitely not able to last hit most of that group wave. That's also another plate, or a first plate that goes over your point clocks as well. Flunk so far, really feeling the pain of the laners, and also even lost out on that first Hextech Dragon. Okay, look at the replay. What exactly happened? Because I know the cage was there. I think they just wanted to go for a trade, maybe. Seems like. As yeah, there you go. Cage. Yoppa's trapped inside. And the issue is the Trompers actually stop Rumbengi from going back. And it's actually smart from Guff to actually give him a position to battle dance away, but she loses too much HP whilst he's inside that baby cage. That was a lot of damage coming out. Uh, Frank said, got that pickaxe, so it's hurting quite a lot here. There's an uh, Errol. Mid lane's been quiet, understandably. Cassiopeia into Xerath is pretty much... Xerath just sits under the tower with range and just pokes away. Yeah, that is exactly how it goes. Really, will be absolutely fine in the mid lane. I expect they will actually want to keep Xerath in the mid lane for as long as possible. And also I think Herald going to be a big point of contestion here, just simply because when you have these wave clear mages like Azir, like Xerath, like Victor, if you're able to deny away the Herald from the other team and keep that mid lane tier one up, it becomes a bit of a safe haven for you for so long. That's flung there trying to force their way into this river. 3v4. Yeah. Getting themselves a two-man knock-up. Here comes the train, though. The hostile takeover. Only going to do a bit of work. I say that, but Rote Benge will lose his life. And just like that, Natives finds two. In comes one more Arcane Pulse, but it's not going to hit. And Shafty will get away. Yeah, and I mean, that's just a one fight for natives. They had the numbers there just a little bit sooner. And that Vanks Orma was definitely nice to try and set something up, but the issue is on the bottom side, forced out by the Renal Orma, by the Call of the Forge God. There's too much AoE CC that's threatening the backline for following up on that engage. And unfortunately, Flung can't make a fight come together. Absolutely tragic stuff there is uh, Errol. Just making his way back to the mid lane. And got to get a plate in the meanwhile. While all that was going on. We'll find Jopper in the in the cage, but he has a light trade find two plates For himself, so not so bad. Actually, Reed, if we could take a look at the gold. I would like to know how these two bottom lane carries sit. And yeah, those two plates actually bring that gold lead back in. It was almost 500. It's going to feel nice for the Vega. Just across the board as well. Not too many major leads. Mostly really the top lane. Where Lindor finds himself with two kills. As we have a look at the replay from this, it, it, it felt like Flung had found themselves in an okay position there. The Miasma went down, they got the two-man knockup. Yeah. They had the train coming in as well. And then this hostile takeover just did so much work for them. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? It even sets up for Lundorf as well, the Call of the Forge God. Just too much disruption in the back line. If that Ulmer from Vangstead is followed up on, it's definitely a one fight from Naves, but again, Renard just being used to perfection there. Such a powerful champion. Naves were one of the first adopters in the league of the pick. Even going as far as B1-ing it many times. And you can definitely see why Clox's efficiency at the champ. It's very, very high. Such a powerful team fighting tool. Like you said, we're able to line up for the uh, Call of the Forge God just makes it even better. But the dragon's spawning up, and it looks like Flung are actually first in the area. This is what we're talking about. Set up into the area, but it's nearly Blast Cannon's over. They've got a lot of tools to work with. Lock I'll take over the Here comes the knock-up. The takeover is going to land on the three members. Jopper's burning low. He gets himself the bailout. Can he survive? No, he can't. He's heartbroken onto Shafty. Got the traps, got the zap. Still, he's getting a little bit more additional damage off as they chase in for more. God finds the kill. And Riley just able to dodge away for the moment. 
and that is two kills for Flong as in comes Vangstead. Looks like the fight's not completely done. There's a bit of a skirmish between the top laners is taking over on the top side, right at the arcane on cooldown. Dragon has been dissuaded, but Flung able to get himself a lovely gold lead. Yeah, they are able to get a bit oh, of a lovely gold lead! The offer! With the snipe onto Errol, that's kind of big because now the native zones, they're actually back out on the map. They've respawned from that team fight. Errol's dead, no teleport. This is actually a dragon now, which honestly, I think natives can probably contest for themselves. <laughs> Top lane has been fighting since that fight. It just <laughs> didn't matter. Bang said it's oh, to go down, but those two have been scrapping during that whole thing. They've just been trading grasp stacks, man. Like, they. <laughs> Do you know what it is? I think they're ARAM enjoyers. They really were just wet noodle fighting out in the mid lane for so long. Herald summoned in the mid lane and will be dropped. And now they'll also pick up the Dragon Yoba. Gonna get two plates for himself, 160 gold. Should also pick up this additional one. I think it's gonna be a solo, yeah. So 320 gold put into the Jinx back pocket. Still on this Dragon. Should take it down uncontested. You can see Shaft is on the top side of the map. Early game just going absolutely natives favored. Flung, unfortunately, just not able to find, I won't say necessarily the fight, because I mean, they won out on that bottom side fight, but unfortunately, Errol losing his life to that rocket just means that, you know, the return afterwards isn't going to be Flung favored because the death timers are so spread out. There we go. Have a look at that fight once again. It, it just always seems to start in Flung's favor. It does, it does. I mean, you can see the ultimate and the knockout there from Romengi is great, but the hostile takeover, the strikes for a couple of seconds. Yoppa, pretty close, honestly, to picking up Errol. Couple more ores would have done it after that zap. Errol, great fancy feet to dodge out on all of the uh, right of the arcane. You can see on the bottom side, it's nearly baby caged up. And so I was talking about the Udit. It's going to be very easy to keep him under control. And oh, you know what? Forget, the top forget the bottom side. What's happening here? Because we know how the. Do they just stare at each other for a while? Like, what is it? I don't know if Ben just goes back up. <laughs> and they just scrap. These two just don't stop fighting, man. I love them. Yeah, like we don't care about the rocket. And actually, you know what? The fact that Yoppa gets the takedown brings him to the mid lane slightly faster because he gets the excited proc. Oh. As, uh, speaking of Yoppa, uh, no longer excited, put in a grave, six feet under. Meanwhile, top lane are continuing to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> How many grass spikes have they got? I'm genuinely is curious. This a, is this a trackable stat from the spectator? I can't remember if it is. Uh, it is if you, you can extended. you can see that you can see the damage, but I don't think you can see how many times they've stacked it. Oh, you can. All right. Oh, so only eleven. Time. Okay, not as much as I thought. I feel like Lundorf has stacked it more. Well, uh, yeah. we'll ask about it in a second. Yes, because he's gonna have to throw the ultimate down. Looking for the knock up onto Shafty. The flash comes out. Snilly's making his way forward. Best and slapping them up. And now Shafty on the run. The right of the arcane will bring the pain. And down he goes. Snilly will take him out. Yes, then they will get that one with the red buff and the aura on the bottom side. However, Gafe and Ron Bengi, they will pick up this tower. So, some of that gold is traded out. This Vega already got the Everfrost. Tear stacking up, Lucidity Boots, Lundorf. I mean, he's out of mana, so I don't think he's necessarily going to overextend. Oh! Oh! He's dead. He's he is dead. dead. Oh! There he is. 600 gold. Oh, whoa! That's a, that's a rich goat, man. All right. That's actually pretty big for Bangstead, actually. So I imagine the build, of course, <laughs> he picked up an extra grass stack. The build is going to be pretty low economy of the whole breakup. I imagine we'll also pick up a uh, Frostfire Gauntlet as well. Not even 6,000 gold in itemization. So that 600 is going to go a long way. And uh, I guess we'll look at Lundorf's grass stacks once he's actually alive. As Errol is now back down on the bottom side. And it's definitely the correct more grass stack for the road. Will he get it? Wait, is he got he's out of combat no. now. Nope, he's out of mana. He just wants yeah, to demolish, more demolish stack. He's the, he's balfsing it out. I mean, he's actually got oh. whole break, he's got hole breaker resist. He's gonna get this tower maybe. Uh, the tower, the minions are gonna die oh, if he gets the extra resist. Yeah. If the minions didn't die, that tower died. A hundred percent. No, I think that the resist would have still been there. They linger for a little bit. I think just uh, oh, the yeah. They okay, do. thirteen. Thank you. Thirteen. Thank, thank you, you. What's the mass on that? Go on. It's five health each grass proc, so he's got 50, 65 bonus HP from grasp. That's why I like the core value. As uh, <laughs> <laughs> Naves, we'll start off this Herald. And if anyone is wondering, Jamada, <laughs> when he plays Aram, plays like a psycho, and he just runs it down with grass stacks. He doesn't mind, he doesn't care dying 11 times because he gets his look, grass you, stacks. You have to understand, uh, as Lindorf will meet Shafty here, that. 
grasp stacks are doubled in ARAM. So each time that you proc grasp, it's 10 extra HP. And you, I'm telling you, if you're in a bruiser game where there's just loads of melee champions and you stack it like efficiently, you get a lot of bonus. Remember, like every 15 stacks is 400 gold worth of stats. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know that. Don't worry. So, uh, you know, you, you'd go with that. You take overgrowth as well, because overgrowth, uh, if memory serves me right, actually stacks faster in ARAM too. You, you just end up with loads of free stats uh, that you wouldn't necessarily be afforded uh, in Summoner's Rift. It's just fun, all right? I, I like it. Health bar get big. Loads of lines in health bar. <laughs> Unkillable. Exactly. Especially when you play things like Scion as well, where you just you get all the bonus HP anyway from just yeah. existing. As a uh, top laners, speaking of Scion, no teleport. Gonna be just about available. 74 Vang's dead. Lindorf will have his once this dragon spawns up and natives rolling the Cloud Salt. I'm not sure how efficient it's really gonna be for them. It is going to love it, of course, all of the resists in terms of slow resist and, of course, the global cooldown. Once the soul is picked up to... Actually, they change it entirely, so you won't have that global cooldown portion anymore. What am I talking about? As Herald will be dropped to the middle lane. They're just going to try and guard them off it. Flung entrance is going to be tough, but they're definitely going to look for it. So much zone control, though. A lot of long range poke as well. Sap connects and the Rift Herald is still up. It probably will just die to this minion wave here, but the fight's for the dragon. That's where these teams are looking to go for. Rotobenge obviously has that quickness, has the flash. He finds a good opportunity, potentially, to find some space for his team, but Guff has been heavily poked out from the right of the arcane. Just gonna continue to fire away. Guff has to flash over, dodging out on the final one, puts the cage down! Oh, Joppa with the rocket! Able to find a double kill just like that. Yoppa on the Jinx, man. He is unleashed, untouched. Like you say, the Rockets just pick him up that double kill nice and easy. Now we'll pick up Native's third dragon of the game called the Forge God. Gonna come in, double knock up, but I mean, so tanky. Oh All those Brill procs, though, yeah, is a lot of like, damage. He's tanky, but not that tanky. Yep, yeah. on damage, man. On damage. As a... Uh, oh, yeah. it, though. They are coming over. What, do they really want to inter interrupt this wet noodle fight up here? Do they really? I don't know, man. I think they're just going to leave it be. I think the problem is Vangstead's noodles are slightly harder. Um, and he's right. able to do a fair amount of damage. That did not come out right. <laughs> <laughs> that was not what I meant to say. Thank you, Jake. For uh, ever being the source of entertainment on this hours. broadcast. Yep. Thank you for being the everlasting entertainment on the broadcast. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, that still doesn't even want to reset. He's just chilled here with Errol. And I mean, to be fair, a face check here would be quite deadly. Oh, um. Huh. Oh. All right. Yeah, we'll we'll look back at how that happened. I'm sure. Z on Zeraf, how did he get baby caged? And killed He had flash as well. Definitely a strange uh, one. Looking to try and find Clocks as the hostile takeover is going to land Shafty. Is taken oh, yeah. down. Yeah, I, I'm still scratching my head more at the pick that Goffey's managed to find onto Relay. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not so bad because Relay still holds on to his flash, so it's not like it's not going to be available. I'm just curious how he got caught out. With uh, yeah, like just with the range disparity, you'd think it's just so difficult. Lindorf will pick up this mid lane tier two, so the map continues to open up more for natives. As let's get a look. I mean. Oh, wow, just right on the edge. On the CC. Zero. Yeah. That's painful. That is painful. I mean, you can just see really just steps up just that bare inch too far forward. That's all it takes. You can see Goffey is online, has that death cap as well on his inventory. See whether or not he wants to finish up the tier. I've seen a lot of variations of Agar builds where at this point, You'll see things like anathemas come out, <laughs> even tank items, other uh, tank items, things like a random in frozen heart, anything like that, will stop you or make you harder to dive onto. You might need to think about it. You also might need to think about getting out of dodge because that's a scary idea. Is able to run back towards Rotobenga to safety. Well, the map remains open for now and. Pace of the game definitely slowed down a little bit. 
I'm not sure what they are actually starting this Baron up. Okay, so it seems like it will just be off of vision, but Flung definitely know what's going on. They're approaching the area. Relay will be behind everybody, but we'll have the ultimate to support, but once it's sniffed out, they just say, never mind. We're just pranking, and they will step back away. Just a quick DPS check to see if they do it, because, I mean, to be fair, Jinx, almost three items. Joppa actually outputting some serious numbers right now. Guff needs to be careful, because he is on a ward. It's just going to put down the baby cage and send everyone packing, and Rossibenge going to try and get some area of control around this Baron pit. Doesn't want to risk it, because that Baron did lose a fair amount of health fairly quickly. So we've got that Tiger Sans and the Jinx, you actually can just cut through it quite fast. Yep, especially it's Kraken Slayer Jinx as well. A little bit of extra true damage probably does go a long way in burning that objective down. But one thing that can't really be understated is Flung's ability to take the Baron if they get a chance to. Cassiopeia Vega. I mean, typically with compositions where there's no AD carry, you think, okay, the Baron's got to go slow. But I mean, Cassio, I think hands she's down. The the, carry of she's, she's, she's the AD carry of Mage. She definitely burns the Baron down the fastest out of any Mage in the game. But also Vega bursts. I mean, three, less than four second rotation on the Q and the W, it's taking out 1k per per rotation. Yeah. It'd be a very, very speedy Baron. As Belf strikes 611. What's the Dark Matter at right now? Because Dark Matter has 100% AP ratio 718. He's got 625 AP. Yeah. That is a... Uh... He's got 200 I mean, he stacks. He's got 200 stacks on this passive. Yeah. He's doing pretty good. He's got the death cap as well, obviously giving him an additional multiplier on that AP. It's a, lot good stuff. it's a lot of damage and we'll see whether or not he gets to use it here as the dragon 10 seconds away and it's again it's natives with control over the area and we've seen flung time and time again try and walk in into these chokes by so difficult maybe they find a fight oh. beforehand though they found clocks with the hostile takeover is too impactful doing too much work and two-man knock-up london flashes over the wall the right to the arcane is landing they found one they found two and flung are falling apart look at the health bars just evaporating shifty trying to get some uh, shifts off trying to steal some forms able to find himself a cheeky double kill on the way out but it is only vangstead who remains snilly is still alive dragon be damned it's time for baron it's time for Baron indeed. They will pick this one up. Excellent flight, flight, flight. Well, I mean, it's definitely a very quick fight. Uh, that natives will pick up the Baron, and it just feels like Flung again spoke about highlight the importance of being in front of the objective first, controlling the chokes They're first. Teleporting in. I mean, they are teleporting in, but what will Guff actually get done here? Really does miss out on the stun. Vangstead's already dead. And now they're stuck between a rock and a very healthy Vangstead. He will be burned down quite quickly. Another other teleport comes down. Really? Guff is coming in with the Venge. Yeah. They found the knockup. They found the stun. They found the cage. They found the shutdown. Errol misses out, but he's able to cash in. And suddenly oh the boy. Barons they just gained are absolutely disappearing. They're going so quick. Guff can't find a little bit more oh. damage. Still he's out. He's going to make it away. Rossi Venge is going to chase, but he can't find the kill. Baron remains on to two members. Sorry, one member of the side yeah. of Natives. Lindorf clocks, they weren't alive when that Baron went down, and now members that are up for Flung, they're going to be able to move over to this dragon, maybe probably take it down. Still, you can see he's trying to farm up these camps, trying to get a little bit of HP back. Ron Benki, I don't think he's going to be able to die. We'll just grand entrance out. Now you can see Snilly, he's going to try to run into the pit. I mean, he's going to get vision, but I think you will see he just backs away. That's an objective bounty now. That Baron triggered that. That's a nice little bit of extra pocket change to go into everybody on Flung's wallets. I think Natives really made a bit of an error there, not just trying to retreat immediately, maybe not expecting that Flung would so willingly throw their lives towards that Baron pit after the Baron was taken down. Question is, now what can they do with only Baron on one member? Where are they going to go? It looks like Snilly's making his way topside to try and deal with this, but Bang said able to take out the first wave. So this tower should still crumble as everybody has made their way over, unless Flung are feeling... Like, really going for a big old fight. But Vangster seems to be somewhat aware that shenanigans are afoot. He is bare stunts. He is taken down. There is nowhere for him to go except back into the enemy team. And Joppa will cash in on his seventh kill. 
And the zombie form will get taken down just like that. There's a large wave has been pushed up by Flung into that bottom side of the map. But someone needs to go to the bot side. I don't think Shafty and Rotten Venga actually really have the wave clear. I don't think they care. I mean, they're just trying to they're just trying to use the one Baron buff they have left right now. And I mean, Flung, they're going to need to defend this sooner or later. That's two towers down in the, the space of one minion wave. Guffey, the actual wave clear is now finally here, but they should get this tower in time. They just have to hug the top side. That cage isn't really going to do enough zoning. As Lindorf not going to be able to recall the Orn Oum that was knocked up. Iron Bengi. And they're getting some crazy value out of that. And Errol even forced away on the bottom side too. Bit of a questionable uh, decision by Flung not to rotate until it was a little bit too late. At least that inhibitor tower does stand. But that was two towers now down on the top side. A big injection of cash into natives who are significantly far ahead. Three minutes until the next dragon spawns up. Baron also coming up at the exact same time. But this is Soul. Not the most impactful soul, but a soul that they'll take no matter what. As uh, Guff just loses most of his health bar. Yeah, it does indeed. You can see some of the range of the Seraph pick starting to be a bit of a nuisance. When you're just talking about standing in front of Seraph in the mid lane, and the minion wave just feels bad. And that mid lane tower as well. Still got enough HP to suffice, as you imagine, really just farming up to get the death cap right now. We'll even get the Luden's upgrade. I think that death cap upgrade gonna come in right now actually still short 300 gold what will he unless buy he has futures market unless he has futures market which he does and he will pick that up good call jake good call did not even think about that rune existing sometimes sometimes me smart once in a blue moon <laughs> once in a blue moon as uh that's clock's note and thanks that is waiting around the corner i think the answer is no we'll cancel his recall anyway And again, I think this is going to be a bit of a waiting game between Cloud Dragon and Baron. But I wonder whether Flung will be willing to go for a Baron if natives do make the choice of going towards that dragon. As Call of Forge God does come down. Oh, two man knockup, actually. They got the best. That's a great Everfrost. Look at that. that right of the arcane. Just Flash. Him down and oh, he's able to time it. Survive for the moment, Shafty jumping in. Here's Errol, got himself the Miasma down, teleport onto the flanks, and he's going a little bit low. They found the knockup, and the snake is down. Vance is on the flank, but he has no friends, he has no backup, and he's just gonna lose his life. Jopper able to output so much damage. And Flung look lost right now. Yeah, Flung. They are everywhere. Neves together as a unit, marching down the mid lane. The solo laners are dead. They might look to try and end the game. They've got a wave. They've got the range, they've got the resources in the health and mana department. And they have to try and dive onto Goth. That could be a little bit difficult with the cage, but they're going to look for it anyway. Cage goes down a little bit late. There's the quickness onto multiple members. Can they get the follow up damage? The Everfrost is there, but an absolutely amazing hostile takeover. Jopper is alive, finds himself the double kill, and just survives with a sliver of health. Rote Benge loses so much health. And natives will be taking game one in this best of five in dominating fashion. Yeah, it feels like that Zeraf pick as well in the later stages, even though 229 doesn't look like he had the most impactful game, right? I mean, definitely was able to put out a lot of work and Yopper on that Jinx. 10-3-7, I think, was the final score. So many kills just ended up going in his back pocket. And again, we spoke about, you know, choke control. Being in front of these objectives first was effectively what won natives the game. They always yeah. used their priority to immediately shift over uh, into one side of the map. And it meant that Flung were always the ones that had to check in to natives. And unfortunately... Going into a hostile takeover, a call of the Forge God, you know, having to deal with Udyr bear slaps. All of these tools are just a little bit too much to deal with because Flung's comp kind of does two things at once, right? You've got sort of Vagar and Cassio that maybe wants to play backwards. And then you've also got, you know, Viego who maybe can, he's a little bit flexible, but you also have effectively just the Scion and the Rakan that mostly want to play forward. And natives will just outrange you if you don't do anything. And I think that was the biggest issue there for Flung. So, Always running into them. Unfortunately, couldn't play around those Olmets. And it means that Natives will take this game uh, and go one up in the series. Yeah, it was a uh, very, very uh, convincing win there from Natives. Um, I think Flung may have to go into this break and kind of have a little bit of a thought about what they want to do if they want to change things up. Because, you know, the, like you said, there, there was a good foundation there, but it kind of fell apart when they locked into chance that didn't really want to match what the rest of the team needed to do. 
uh, well, natives, that team just looked like one cohesive unit that knew exactly how to play that comp and looked absolutely incredible there from natives. But it is still a best of five, so there's still more games to go. Anyway, for us now, we're going to quickly throw to a break. And when we're back, we got back with game number two. So we'll see you in a moment.